Okay, so in this video I'm going to have a look at determining unknown coefficients. So first before I start I just want to look at something like this. Let's say x squared is equal to 9 and then something like this 3x all squared is equal to 9x squared. Now these both m might look something similar but actually this thing here is called an equation. There are only two solutions to this thing here. So in other words if you square root both sides you get a plus 3 or you can uh, get a minus 3. In other words if you square plus 3 you'll get 9, if you square minus 3 you'll also get 9. So there are only two uh, solutions to this equation. This is called an equation. Now over here there are um, well, there are any number of solutions to this, if you like. They're, they're, they're actually, this, act this equation here, if you like, is actually true for all values of x. So in other words, if you put, for example, a 1 in here instead of x, you get 3 times 1, which is 3. Uh, square root, you get 9. Put 1 in here, you'll get 1 squared, which is 1, times 9, which is 9. Now, if you put a 2 in here, you get 2 3s, or 6. 6 squared gives you 36. Put a 2 over on this side, you get 2 squared, which is 4. 4 times 9, 36. And the same for 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Whatever value of x you put in here, this will work. This thing over here is called an identity. So what we're going to do really is look at, um, initially anyway, we're going to look at identities. So we're going to look at this particular identity here. So it's going to be x plus a and it's all cubed and this is going to be equal to x cubed plus px squared so it's x cubed plus px squared plus qx plus 64. Now this is an identity. We're told in this particular question that this is an identity. In other words the left hand side is equal to the right hand side for all values of x. And what we've got to do here is find out what A is, what fi find out what P is, and find out what Q is. So we're looking for these two unknown identities and this particular A here as well. So what we're going to do is multiply out the left-hand side. So the left-hand side is just x plus A times x plus A times x plus A. And that's equal to the right-hand side here. So if we multiply these two out here, what we get is... Um, we're going to get x squared plus 2ax plus a squared and all of that then is going to be multiplied by another x plus a and that's equal to the right hand side again. So if we multiply all this out what we get is x squared times x is x cubed, x squared times a is ax squared, 2ax times x is plus 2ax squared, 2ax times a is plus 2a squared x a squared times x is a squared x and finally a squared times a is a cubed and that is equal to again the right hand side now if we look at these we've got an x squared here and an x squared here we've got an x here and an x here so we can add those so I'll just write down the, a, the x cubed first here we've got one of these ax squareds here we've got two of these ax squareds so that gives me three of these ax squareds here we've got uh, two of these a squared x's. Here we've got one of these a squared x's. So again, that gives me three of these a uh, squared x's. That's these two here. And then finally, we've got an a cubed at the end. And <clears throat> now I'll just write down the right-hand side. It's x cubed plus px squared plus qx plus 64. Now, because this is an identity, what we can do here is equate coefficients. So we can see here we've got an x cubed, we've got a 1x cubed, we've got a 1x cubed here, so they're the same, 1 is equal to 1, so that's fine. Now here we've got, um, we've got a 3a in front of this x squared, and we've got a p here in front of this x squared, so what we can say here is that p is equal to 3a. Here we have, um, in front of our x, we've got a 3a squared. And in front of our x here, we've got our plus q. They're both plus, so we can say that q 
here is going to be equal to 3a squared. And then finally, this number here, independent of x, they're going to be the same as well. So in other words, a cubed is just going to be equal to 64. Okay, so we have three equations here. We have three unknowns, so we're just going to solve for the three unknowns here. So what we're going to do is, let's see which one. Well, we can solve this one here immediately. We can just cube root both sides. Cube root of 64 is 4. So now I know what a is. All I've got to do is substitute a in here, substitute a in here, and that'll give me p and q. So we put the uh, 4 in here. That'll give me p here is equal to... Uh, 3, 4 is 12. Here I've got Q. That's going to be equal to 3 times 4 squared. So 4 squared is 16, and then 3 times 16 is 48. So I have P here. I've got Q here, and I've got A here. So they're the values that would be in here for the A, here for the P, and here for the Q. So I've determined these um, unknown coefficients, if you like. Okay, so let's have another um, have another problem here. So let's just write out another one. We're told that um, we have, let's say, x squared plus ax uh, minus b. And we're told that this is a factor of, is a factor of x cubed minus 2, x cubed minus 2, uh, bx squared plus ax minus 6. So we're told that this is a factor of this. So in other words, if we divide this quadratic into this cubic, we'll get zero remainder. So the question is, what we have to do is express a in terms of b. So we have to find an equation with a and b in it, um, and then just get a on its own, isolate a, so we have a is equal to uh, some expression with b. Okay, so what we're told here is this is a factor of this cubic here, so that means if we divide it in, we should get zero remainder. So let's divide it in and see what happens. So we have our x squared plus ax minus b, and we want to divide that into our x cubed, minus 2bx squared plus ax minus 6. Now my 6 and b here, both of them look very similar, but this is a 6, this is a b. I'll try to do them, uh, may distinguish them anyway, but let's see. We have to divide this x squared into this x cubed, so that's going to give me x squared. Sorry, no, it's not. It's going to give me just x. x squared times x will give me x cubed, yeah. So now we've got to multiply this x by these three here, write our answers underneath. So here we get an x cubed, x times x squared is x cubed, x times plus ax is plus ax squared, x times minus b, minus b times x. We put a line underneath and we subtract. So we put a bracket around here if you like, and we're going to subtract this line from this line up here. So what do we get? Well x cubed minus x cubed is going to give me 0. Minus times plus here becomes minus. This is going to become a minus here. So what I end up with here is minus 2bx squared, and this becomes a minus ax squared. What I can do here is factorize out the x squared. So I end up with minus 2b minus a and the x squared out here. So this is what I should end up with factorizing out this x squared. So that under, if I subtract these two, I end up with bracket minus 2b minus a and then x squared here. Now let's do the same here. Well this minus minus becomes a plus, so this here becomes a plus. So I've got to, I end up with ax plus bx here. Again, if I factorize out the x here, I got a plus b, all multiplied by x. So when I subtract these two, I end up with plus a plus b times x. Now bring down this minus 6 here, so I'm just going to bring this down here. 
Okay, so now we start all over again. So divide this x squared into this first term here, and I end up with plus minus 2b minus a. Then I take this here and I multiply it by these three, put my answer underneath here. So the first term should be the same, minus 2b minus a times x squared, and it is, that's fine. Multiply this by the ax, so that gives me plus minus 2b minus a ax. This ax here ends up here if you like. Now multiply this by this minus b here, so I end up with plus uh, minus to b minus a times b. Actually, I've got this sign here wrong. If you look here, this is a plus here. I'm multiplying by a minus, so this here should be a minus. So I'll just take that out. So this bit here should be minus. Let me just get rid of some of this as well, if I can. No, okay, I'll leave it there for the moment. Uh, so I'll just change that. This becomes minus here. Okay, let me just take some of this out. It's kind of getting in the way here, so we'll just take this bit here out. Okay, so let's put a line underneath here. And normally what we would do here now is put a bracket around here and subtract, the same as we did up here. But really I'm finished at this stage. There's nothing more I can bring down. And really at this stage, when I subtract this line here from this line here, I should get zero here, zero, zeros down here because we're told that this is a factor of this cubic here. So in other words, if I get zeros down here when I subtract, really what that means is that this term here should be exactly the same as this term here because they cancel out when you subtract or you get zero when you subtract. And we can see that they are. Similarly, this um, a plus b times x should be exactly the same as this plus minus 2b minus a bracket a times x. It doesn't look the same, but because we're told that we get a zero remainder, they are actually the same. So what we can do now is write down a plus b should be exactly the same as minus 2b minus a times a. Similarly here, this term independent of x and this term independent of x here, they both have a minus in front of them, that's fine, we don't have to worry about the signs then. We can also say that that 6 should be exactly the same as minus 2b minus a times b. Because if I subtract this from this, in other words, if I was to change that sign and add them, we get zero down here, we're told we get zero. So they have to be exactly the same before I change this sign. Okay, so now what we've got to do is find um, an equation here that we can use to express a in terms of b. Well, if I look at this one here, if I multiply that out, I get a plus b is equal to two minus two a b minus a squared. So I end up with this kind of quadratic, if you like, in a um, so it's going to be difficult to isolate the a here. Um, let's have a look at this one here. If I multiply this out, I get 6 is equal to minus 2. Well, actually, I'll do it slightly differently. What I'll do is I'll divide across by this b first. So it's 6 divided by b is equal to minus 2b minus a. Now here I can get the a on its own, so that should be fine. Uh, let's take this, we get a 6 over b uh, plus 2b is equal to minus a. And I, I just bring this over here. Or add 2b to both sides if you like. Now let's just uh, make this an a rather than a minus a. So multiply across by minus 1. So that gives me uh, minus I put the minus 2b first, and then the minus 6 over b here. So now I have, I have here a in terms of b, which is exactly what we were asked for. Minus 2b minus 6 over b is equal to a. So that's exactly what we were asked for here. Okay, so that's it for uh, this video.